thank you for that far too kind introduction, Mike. Um, glad you didn't tell any, uh, any more stories. Uh, join me in a word of prayer. Oh God, please send your Holy Spirit now to this place. Give us a word that will edify our spirit. That sure enough will terrify the enemy and glorify your name. In the name above all names, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'll be reading today uh, from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, verses 36 to 46. And it goes like this. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Verse 46, and Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. I like to preach as the Spirit shall God for a few moments from the thought to our grandmothers. To our grandmothers. AOP, it was a few months ago after the tragic uh, slaying of Mike Brown in Ferguson uh, that we were uh, just filled uh, and had images that were thrown at us from all sides from the media. But one image in particular, it was actually a video that struck my soul was one that I saw uh, that weekend. And it was uh, after uh, an older elderly woman was protesting in the streets as she met with a young person who had decided to uh, express his frustration uh, his sign of resistance in the form of looting. Uh, this elderly woman met this young man as a bandana covered his face, stopped him in his tracks, held him in her hands and looked into his eyes and said, you don't have to do this, my son. You don't have to do this, my son. And I didn't quite understand what was happening in that moment until I read this text. May I set the scene? You see, Mary was doing all right in life, grew up a poor Palestinian teenager, and everything was going okay. She was uh, engaged to, uh, uh, to Joseph. But then the angel Gabriel comes down to Mary and says that you are about to be pregnant with the Messiah. The Holy Spirit is about to fill you and you're about to be pregnant with the Messiah. Now, I can imagine that Mary said, that's cool, Gabe, but there's only one problem. I am not married yet. And how am I supposed to explain this to everyone, let alone Joseph, what is happening? So Mary comes to a place that a lot of us find ourselves when God calls us to something that doesn't make sense. What do you do when God calls you to something that does not make sense? You feel almost as if God must have gotten the wrong number, the wrong person on the other side of the line, when you don't feel adequate enough to what God is calling you to do. So it's in this anguish, it's in this pain, it's in this frustration that Mary makes her way to her relative, Elizabeth. And that brings me to the first point uh, of my message. Every Mary needs an Elizabeth. Watch this. God sends the angel Gabriel to tell Mary that she is about to give birth to the Messiah. And she goes and she meets Elizabeth, 
Because every time we are in a merry moment in our lives, we need to speak to someone who can say, I've been where you are, you're going to be okay. Every now and then, when we're in a situation where we're called to do something that feels bigger than us, we need to link up with someone who's been where we are, who has experienced what we are experiencing, who can look us in the eye and say, don't worry, I've been where you are. I know what it's like to not understand where I'm headed. God has got your back. This came up in my own life when I first got to seminary. I got to divinity school and everything about it was different. Uh, Natalie and Mike and I went to Occidental College. Mike is a master on the grill, so I would come from my winter here in Brooklyn and go down, and Mike would always tell me, it's all in the wrist, it's all in the wrist, and Mike would cook up those burgers at his house. So I was coming back to New Haven, this cold climate, and all I wanted to do was go back to what I was familiar with. Went to one of the professors, uh, he's actually also the pastor that I, I study under, and I told him that I was hungry uh, for the, the past life that I had. I wanted to go back to college, I wanted to go back to what was familiar, and he listened to everything that I had to say. And right when I was finished, he validated my feelings and said, now it's time to get back to work. He let me know that he had been where I was. He sat in the very uh, seat that I was sitting in and had made the same complaints. And he let me know that every one of us will come to a point in our lives where we are in a merry moment and we need someone like Elizabeth to pour into our spirits. Every Mary needs an Elizabeth. Second thing that the text teaches us is not only does every Mary need an Elizabeth, but what was forming inside of Elizabeth speaks to what is about to happen in Mary. Watch this. So many times in our churches, we like to posit an older generation with a younger one, as if they're in opposition to each other and cannot coexist. But what this text teaches me is that we've been looking at the paradigm all wrong. That every now and then, when Elizabeth is pregnant with John, my Bible readers know that John is the one that goes and prepares the way for Jesus. So literally what is forming inside of Elizabeth recognizes where Mary is headed and what is forming inside of Elizabeth recognizes who Mary is and leaps for joy. Every now and then, we need someone who's standing on the other side of where we are and has something forming inside of them that recognizes where you are headed and can say to you, blessed are you that God has called you. What's forming inside of Elizabeth speaks to Mary. But watch this. I had a problem with the text because Mary goes and seeks out Elizabeth. Mary gets out of her comfort zone and goes and seeks out Elizabeth. And as the great Harvard biblical scholar Elizabeth Susafria Renza would let us know, that uh, the Bible is not just uh, an archetype, it's not just a prototype, but it's also um, an archetype, which means that it's not this stagnant model, but it's a model that can uh, breathe new life into our lives and that we can change when needed. Watch this. Mary leaves where she's going and goes to Elizabeth. But I came to posit that every now and then, when we've entered into an Elizabeth season in our lives, every now and then we have to go and find Mary where she is that not every Mary is wise enough to find Elizabeth. So it's not our job to stay and wait for Mary to find us. Every now and then we have to go find Mary where she is. Sometimes Mary cannot hear what Gabriel is saying to her because Mary might be stuck in the hood in Chicago and Gabriel's message is drowned out by the gun violence, which is a symptom of gentrification and racism. Maybe Mary can't hear Gabriel because she's in the favelas of Brazil and can't hear his message because she is so blinded by her poverty. 
Maybe Mary can't hear Gabriel's message because she has been told that she is not worthy as a woman to stand in the same place as a man. Maybe Mary cannot hear Gabriel's message because sexism in the church has made her believe that as a woman she should not be standing proclaiming the word of God. We cannot wait for Mary to come to us every now and then when God has placed you in in Elizabeth experience season of your life, you have to go find Mary where she is. So not only does every Mary need an Elizabeth, not only does what's forming inside of Elizabeth speak to Mary, but watch this. Mary moves from anguish to praise. Mary leaves her encounter with Gabriel and is so scared that she runs to Elizabeth and she gets to a place where she changes her disposition to be one of worry to praise. So she goes and she meets with Elizabeth and after hearing her words of encouragement, moves from worrying about her call to just blessing the name of the Lord. And let that be a word to us today. That whether you are here in a merry moment or God has placed you in an Elizabeth experience, that an encounter with someone that can speak life into your situation, speak life into your call, can move you from a place of anguish to praise. And it's for that reason that I thank God for our grandmothers. Those who have come before us and have spoken life into uh, our situation into our calls into our destinies so if you don't mind can I just go through a few grandmothers who I'm thankful for see I'm thankful for our grandmothers because if there was no Eve there would be no Sarah if there was no Sarah there would be no Rebecca if there was no Rebecca there would be no Rachel if there was no Rachel there would be no Rahab if there was no Rahab there would be no Deborah if there was no Deborah there would be no not only if there was no Naomi, there would be no Ruth. If there was no Ruth, there would be no Elizabeth. If there was no Elizabeth, there would be no Mary. If there was no Mary, there would be no Jesus. If there was no Jesus, there wouldn't have been the four women that met him when he first rose up from the dead. If there were not those four women, there would be no one like Eunice. If there was no Eunice, there would be no one like Lois. And if there was no Lois, there may have not been a Sojourner Truth. If there was no Sojourner Truth, there may not have been a Mary Bethune, uh, uh, Mary Bethune McClune. If there was no Mary Bethune McClune, there would not be someone like Harriet Tubman. If there was not Harriet Tubman, there would be no one like Coretta Scott King. If there was no Coretta Scott King, there would be no one like Betty Shabazz. If there's no one like Betty Shabazz, there would be no one like Wendy Holbrook. If there's no one like Wendy Holbrook, we would not be in this room. I thank God for our grandmothers who have stood in the gap, speaking to a Mary generation, standing from their experiences, speaking from eternity to translate God's call into our lives as not something just to be anguished about, but something to rejoice in. I thank God for our grandmother.